you were talking okay. about. I want to take one mm. last question. We've only got a few moments, but it's an important question, and I think we'd just like to hear the panel's opinion. It's Chris Phillips's question, please. With overstretched armed forces fighting two wars, how can the government justify current spending levels? And this is in the light of the UK, the newly formed UK National Defence Association, saying expenditure on the armed forces should go up by 1% of GDP, and they're overstretched fighting their two wars. Uh, Tony McNulty, but be brief if you would, please. Well, just two points. Firstly, I welcome the, the non-party lobby group to argue more and more for our armed services. I think that's a valuable contribution. Actually, uh, this last uh, comprehensive spending review, uh, the uh, armed services, the defence budget is higher than at ever level it's been uh, since Labour came into government, the increase. And since 1999, there has been significant increases. Uh, in the uh, overall uh, budget. It so used to be five, over 5% yeah, of yeah, yeah. GDP, and it's well, now two and a bit. Yeah, which is partly about the growth of GDP and partly about the armed services and what they do being different from how they used to uh, do things. But I think the fact that we should do more, we should recognise more the contribution, not just of yesterday's soldiers, as we'll do on Sunday, but of uh, today's uh, and tomorrow's, and I think that is a real debate that should be had. But the money for the next round, I think MOD were one of the uh, largest gainers uh, out of it, and that needs right. to be uh, put to very, very good use. Okay. Vince Cable? Well, we're overstretched because we shouldn't be in one of those two <coughs> wars in the first place. I mean, the two wars you're... Do um, you think there should be more money spent on the armed forces? No, I, we're not arguing for that. I mean, there, there are two wars taking place. One is Afghanistan, where we have good reason to be there, and are making a major contribution to, to a, a, an intervention that was fully supported by the international community. But the, we should never have been in Iraq, and we should be withdrawing from it. And that deals with a large part of the issue of the overseas. Okay. No, it doesn't. I, I, I don't it's just well, I think if you have armed forces and if you have people that you're sending abroad on these uh, terrible missions, then you should support them and you should spend as much money as you possibly can on them. I look forward to the day when that's no longer necessary and, um, and our forces are pulled back from these places where they are. Okay. Michael Hesdon, you were three years, I think, Secretary of State for Defence. What yeah. do you think? Uh, I think that uh, David Cameron is absolutely right to promise a forces family manifesto, setting out the obligations and the rights and the standards that the dependents and the family and the, children, the soldiers coming back are entitled to expect. Uh, this ought to be a priority, and uh, it has not been a sufficient priority. The responsibility for that lies with the Secretary of State for Defence in this government, one of whom is part-time. Can you believe it? He's not only Secretary of State for Defence, when we've got all these stretches, he's also Secretary of State for Scotland. It's the most incredible insult to Britain's armed forces I can remember. Uh, and I, I would say, and I'd say it as politely as I can, to the senior figures in the armed forces who are actually in the Ministry of Defence, you have a big influence over the budget and the welfare of the lads and lasses underneath your command ought to have had a higher priority than it has had in recent years. Is 3% a realistic figure I do, you can't, for them to go I to? I can't plan public expenditure profiles years ahead. But, I mean, do you have a view whether that's no, a realistic you figure you to go for? Yeah, I'm not yeah, asking, yeah, you're yeah, not in government. Yeah, you don't no, exactly, have to plan exactly, it. Exactly. What do you think exactly. of the view no, I, the, put by these people? I, I'm, I'm not going to say, let us have now higher levels of public expenditure. Right. What I'm saying is that there's a very large defence budget, and within that it should be possible to meet these obligations as a very important priority. You'll have to be very brief, Douglas well, Murray, I'm First afraid. of all, if there is overstretch with two really quite small conflicts in the grand scale of things, if there is overstretch, and we're really in trouble, ladies and gentlemen, uh, contra the contributions of one lady on the panel, um, this is not going to go away. It's not, there's not going to be a day soon when all troops can come home and you won't need armies. You're going to need them more, ladies and gentlemen, and that means you're going to have to spend more. And to quibble about 2% and nudging over 2%, you need to double the spending on the armed forces in this country. You're going to be serious about it. We spend less now as percentage of GDP than at any time since the 1930s. 1930 itself, indeed. You've got to wake up. You've got to realise when we talk about spending money on health care and all all of these things and we quibble with the armed forces particularly when we come up to this Sunday we should remember nothing deserves more money and more support than people who are risking their lives for us okay and we've, we've, uh, we've, we've got to stop it's uh, it's uh, times up for this week you can continue this debate switch now over to news 24 and our sister program question time extra with Chris Eakin 
We'll be examining what's been said here by this panel and chewing it over for a bit. Or you can stay with BBC One and watch this week. If you want to watch Question Time again, there's a shorter version of it on News 24, Saturday evening at 8.30. Thank you all, panellists, for coming here. Thank you all for coming to Bethnal Green to take part. It's Buxton next week for this debate, pitting the two challengers for the leadership of the Liberal Democrat Party uh, when Vince Cable stands down against each other, and that's that programme. And if you want to be uh, there or in the programme in Glasgow the following week, 0871 626 or our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash question time. Uh, from all of us here in London, good night.